Hi, my name is Ken and you're watching Mastering UX. Um, in this episode, I'd like to take a look at tree testing. The title of this episode is Ensuring Findability with Tree Testing. You know, with card sorting, there's a lot more interest around finding the overall organization. And instead of looking at the user's behavior and what they do with the task, it's really taking a little bit more of a look at how do they think of things and what is their mental model. I want to start you off with this quote, like I've done in many of the episodes, and it comes from Peter Morville. So Peter Morville says, Findability precedes usability in the alphabet and on the web. You can't use what you can't find. You know, this really makes a lot of sense. Okay, something might be the greatest content on earth, but if you can't find it, if it's not easy to find, then certainly it's of no value to you. Well, tree testing is something that's a tool that's going to help you uh, improve your findability. I want to start you off and let's take a look at this kind of research landscape. And within the research landscape, you can kind of of divided up into an XY coordinate. And up at the top, I put these labels, there's attitude and there's behavior. And down on the vertical column, there's qualitative and quantitative. And really all research methods kind of veer towards certain spectrums of, of these axes. It could be very attitudinal, it could be very behavioral, it could be very qualitative, and it could be very quantitative. One thing I want to point your attention to is user experience professionals spend a lot of time taking a look at things that are in the quadrants of attitudinal and qualitative qualitative. And so there's nothing wrong with this. This is definitely our specialty. But I do want to point your attention to that there are some methods that are definitely very good for doing quantitative behavioral studies. You know, and there's other studies that the business may bring in. They like to do NPS scores, customer feedback. They have analytics. And I know some of these insights that tools are giving you are starting to get a lot better and they are getting a lot more insightful. Um, they also have A-B testing. And you kind of see that they tend to do things in different court, different quadrants that user experience does. Well, if you take a look at these purple sticky notes, I wanted to point your attention that UX also does things that are quantitative and they also are very behavioral based. So when is tree testing useful? I would say that tree testing is very useful before a redesign. Um, it's also very uh, useful for evaluating a competitor. Um, the next one is it's very useful for validating your findability. Again, um, you're not really looking to get an overall uh, take on how users think of your navigation, but you're really trying to hone in on some specific tasks and find out if they can find that needle in the haystack. And then the very interesting thing about tree testing is you're able to do it before you're redesigned and you're also able to retest at launch. So because tree testing is something that you just upload a sitemap, it's quite easy to do. It makes it very easy to test your competitors. You can test before, even if you don't have a design really ready, and you could kind of see how your progression of all the studies and all the work that you've done and all the creative thinking that you put into this, you can do a retest very easily and you will have a quantitative metric to go by. So how do I tree test? Well, the first thing I would recommend is with card sorting, I really recommend it for you to do things in person. With tree testing, I really recommend for you to use an online tool such as Optimal Sort. The other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a sitemap. It can be actually the complete in-depth sitemap. Um, Optimal Sort gives you a very way to just create an Excel spreadsheet where you put the first tier in one column, you put the second tier in another column, and you put as many tiers as you want. And this can get infinitely deep. And so if you had About Us, you might have underneath About Us in the second column, um, press releases, our culture, our philosophy as a second tier, and then in our philosophy let's say you can have a third tier in the third column. The other thing is, is you're going to want to recruit participants and you're going to want to have to about 20 to 350 participants. You know, uh, you measuring, they put together a very interesting study and they found that if you do about 381 participants, you get to a 95% confidence on your sort of consistency of your results. Um, you can kind of expect uh, your t to do a retest and find that your metrics are to kind of fall fall within line. Um, now, if you have 20 participants, it comes to an 80% confidence um, rating. And I know that sounds very low, but I do want to make the point that 
you're still going to get something very insightful, even if you don't go to the 381 participants. So you're still going to be able to find out things like is where they get hung up, uh, what kind of tasks are they doing easier than other tasks, are there certain places that cause people to spend more time on. All these things are going to be available to you, even if you do a very small study. So don't be discouraged by that number. So the very last thing is, is when you do these online tests, they're going to have results for you that are tracking automatically in real time, and it's going to save you a lot of work. And you're going to be, going to be able to copy and paste some of these things and put them into your decks, present them to the business, store those results, and go ahead and do another retest and kind of see how you did um, from your first test to your second test. So I wanted to show you a couple of these kind of metrics that um, Optimal Sort puts together. And so you could have something of a success metric, and this shows that you have 60%. Another one is you can do it by task. You can have uh, sort of uh, in, in different colors, the direct success, the indirect success, and sort of the indirect failures. You can find out how much time they've been spending, which is about 28 seconds. So hopefully you're getting some kind of feeling for tree testing. Uh, so what's so special about tree testing? Well, it's a very insightful, objective metric that user experience usually doesn't spend a whole lot of time um, with, with uh, objective metrics. The other thing is, is you get to set the intention because you know the intention. This has a lot of insight to it. You know, you can do web analytics and you can get much larger numbers, but you never know what the intention of the user is. So the third one is, is that you can test a complete sitemap. You could have a thousand items on there. You could have four tiers of navigation. You can upload all this and set up tests that allow a user to go very deep into your website. And then the last thing that I do want to leave you off, it's great to have a goal. By having an objective metrics, which can be done in this kind of test retest method, or doing as an A-B test, or doing as a let's test against our competitors, it really gives the UX a goal to strive to beat something. You could set up your, user, your competitor's navigation system and then see if you can beat their uh, navigation structure. So there you go. Hopefully this is a tool that you'll find useful in your sort of toolbox of user research methods. Hope you found this content useful and I'll see you on the next episode.